Welcome to Oregon Voters Digest, the program that brings forward the social and political issues that are important to people living here in the Pacific Northwest. And now, your host, Bruce Broussard. Okay, welcome again to this segment of the Oregon Voters Digest. I'm Bruce Broussard, your host. Welcome again, folks. I mean, we have all sorts of activities that are happening around us. I mean, what, what can I say? If some of you just don't even want to read the paper. Some of you don't want to look at the tube, TV, or this, that, and the other. But I don't know what the deal is. But anyway, it's over here. Uh, are we still on? Yeah, we are on. I'm sorry. I'm thinking, looking for technical difficulties. Yeah. But anyway, thanks for joining us today. Uh, our guest today, again, as you can see, uh, uh, I was going to say paintings, but anyway, I, I was going to say... They can't see because she's they, showing the paintings. They can't see. They're showing the painting. Okay, mm -hmm. good. Well, anyway, our <laughs> guest is... That's right, the painting. Uh, Tom D. Jordan. There he is, folks. You see him? Now, let's see if we can get... Let's, get, let's see if we can get him in person now. Okay, and here's Tom. Tom, welcome again, my friend. How you been? No, been good. Good, good. good to see him back well, here. Uh, as a, good as to see you. Bob here to and keep then, you in line. Bob is sitting over here too. I mean, to keep us keep us going, if you will. Mm. And again, as you know, we started off with, with with some of Tom's paintings. And if you're interested in some of his paintings, you can you can always either give him a call. Or there's something on the screen that pretty well identifies where you can where you can contact Tom. But the thing that we're very much interested in, in Tom is is that he's normally he's quoted in the Oregonian uh, constantly. And in fact, today, if you got the Oregonian Day, which is the 18th, today is the 18th of October, and you went to the editorial section of the, of the, the opinion section of the, the day's Oregonian, if you want to purchase it, and uh, you'll note that Tom is quoted again. In the short takes. In the short takes. In the short takes. In fact, he was the last one. It was very interesting. One. In fact, that's how we're going to start the show. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna spend some time on a number of his short takes. Uh, we just happen to have him here, and he's here in the... In the Pacific Northwest, and we're just we're just so honored to have you, right, Bob? We are all the time. Right, right, right. So oh, why don't we start? I feel like one of my legs is getting longer than the other. <laughs> I think it is. <laughs> in fact, why don't we start off with your quote today in the Oregonian? All which right. I think was very appropriate. It seems every attempt, regardless how trite, twisted, or sophomoric, is somehow used to besmirch Obama. It's getting downright embarrassing to be a responsible, concerned Republican. Oh wow! And lonely too. Oh wow! Well, you know that's a, this interesting piece. And that's going to what we're going to talk about the show. And by the way, we're going to open up the line. We're going to spend the first half hour just talking about various issues that that are relevant. And we're going to have to use Tom because he's been making quotes, and we've asked him to bring some of his other quotes, ones that have either been posted and are some he's working on that's yet to be posted. So you're going to have the privilege, if you will, of. of hearing the quote before it even appears in the Oregonian. Not to say that you shouldn't purchase a mm -hmm. Oregonian, you know, but a lot of times people are still frustrated about the newspaper aspect of it. But right. anyway, there's, there's some good points about any media for that matter, and that is to get a, at, least, at least to know what's going on, okay? But you know, I notice also too, as part of the conversation that we're talking about with reference to the quote that you made, it was quoted today in the, in the Oregonian that uh, only 20% of Republicans were, uh, were willing to, uh, willing to allow their names to be used in the statistics as far as Republicans w identifying themselves as Republican, 20%. Mm -hmm. And on the Democratic side, it was identified as 34% of Democrats allowed themselves to be identified as Democrats. So I thought that was very interesting. So why don't we have a little discussion about, <coughs> about that, especially your, <coughs> your quote, Tom. Um. On the Republican side, the, what do you think? Why? What's the, what's the deal? It's, it's, it's embarrassing to be a Republican. If you have any education and you have a, you're a reasonable person and, you know, you're balanced here, it says you have to be embarrassed of what's coming out from the Republican Party. We're looking at health care. We're coming so close. And other than Senator Snow from Maine, mm -hmm. the Republicans are happy to say no. They have never supported any social policy from early Medicare, 40-hour week, you know, and uh, the leaves, all this sort of stuff that we take for granted now. It has been the Democrats that has pushed it, and the Republicans have, um, have resisted it, and primarily because they are the party, primarily, that represents business. 
and if it's going to cost extra money from business, they'll say no. And they have their representative that says, hey, no. But, but That's most, my take. But, you know, but in most cases, they're, they're always saying that um, the representation of either party, for that matter, suppose they're representing the majority of the population because they're elected, if you will, from a majority standpoint. But, but as you say, but yet and still, from the, when you start thinking about lobbyists, when you start thinking about the folks who are actually contributing the money to get these people elected to office, right? That's another, that's a whole that's a, another a, dimension whole, another of dimension this. Aspect of that's it. right. So, so wh why is it that the majority of the, of both sides of the aisle, from a population standpoint, why are they speak, why aren't they not speaking up by calling up their various, quote, representatives and say, hey, that's not the way, I, that's not, that's not the way I'm thinking, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and letting these people know that it's about transparency. It's not just by your own or the individual thoughts. Bob? Well, one of the things that has happened over the years is we've gotten away from the people making the decision and, the rep and they are representative carrying it out to the point that the representatives are now telling us what we should be thinking and doing. And so uh, it's hard to make a phone call and say, <laughs> to get a group of people to make a phone call and say, that's not what we want. We want this. Uh, I mean, it would be good. I remember back in the 70s when they used to have a mailgram. And they say the mailgram gets there in the next day's mail. And they had this commercial where this congressman would, had made a statement and there were mailgrams that came in and he found out he was wrong. You know, and so the truth of the matter is we've gotten so busy and we began to believe that Eisenhower tale that started during his time that said, uh, the people don't make the decisions. So we have the point you now know. is that it's not a government of the people, by the people, and for the people. It's about, as you say, what the business of the corporations, of for the, the corporations, and and that, and disproportionately so. Hmm. <clears throat> the they have the the vast amount of money, and that's to their and on their to their advantage. The thing that they're most frightened about is the fact the rest of us greatly outnumber them and if we ever got together and got angry enough we would threaten them very much so that's that is the advantage but it requires organization and commitment and steadfastness to stick to the agenda so why aren't we yeah. not doing that <clears throat> well one of the things is everybody I, I treat root politics kind of like slavery uh, the plantation owner didn't keep people in slavery it was the outsiders that wanted to be like the plantation owner that kept slaves in line. They would hunt them down. They would uh, find them in the in the and everything else. And we, the people, want to be like the businessman, and we want to feel important. So how do you feel important? You agree with them. And a perfect example of that is health care. I mean, I haven't seen one business uh, owner. A uh, big, a uh, large corporation come out and say, "No, we should, we we shouldn't have health care." You know, it's been all these little people showing up at the, <coughs> at these meetings and 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 saying, "It's we don't want the government telling us uh, determining how what kind of health care we're going <coughs> to have." I mean, how dumb can you be to say something of that nature when you don't have anything in the beginning? And what you have, you can't afford. Huh? Which is kind of interesting because um, you would think business and industry would jump on this. Because right now, excuse me, I got a little dry cough. Mm -hmm. um, the cost of a GM car or American made car is $1,500 more because we are paying for the health care of the employees, mm -hmm. which gives us a big disadvantage over our competition. If health care was universal, it has nothing to do with your job or being employed, um, that would be an expense. Um, that would be, uh, you know, you dismissed uh, that expense. That would go, uh, <coughs> the, the person is able to have um, the, ent the entire profit rather than this health care expense. For that reason, I would say businesses would want to jump on this. Hmm. Well, you know, when you, just what you just made the point about the clunker situation, that mm -hmm. we just went through that whole situation with the clunker situation. Now, with that added cost of health care aspect of it, 
that means that the local manufacturers of automobiles didn't actually come in at the top uh, as for a sale. Toyota, <coughs> most of your foreign countries were basically able to sell their cars because they were cheaper. Yes. All right. Okay, along that particular line. Well, look, now we've spent a little time on that piece. I mean, put, pull those goodies back out of that coat pocket. You know, we want you to kind of give us those exclusives, Tom. I mean, give us another one uh, that's very interesting and timely uh, as of today. Now, these are quotes that, that could possibly be published in the Oregonian here, folks. We just, got, we just went through one. What's another one? Incessant sophomore trashing, inciting efforts against this administration's efforts, exceeds the rights granted by the First Amendment. Can you spell sedition? Hmm. How did you come about that particular stage? What was how? in your mindset? Yeah, what was in the mindset? How, well, how, how did you develop that? What was your, what was your thought? You saw something. There, I you? no, I, you, you see the, you see the, um, not all of it, of course, but you see a certain conservative uh, TV station, mm -hmm. and you see what they're trying to do and create an image of being more in influential than they really are. And then they're deceiving the public, you know, in other words. And they're trying to incite people against Obama, this administration. They don't want him to succeed. They want him to fail. Well, when you start inciting against administration, that's the definition of sedition. Hmm. And sedition is? What is that is the, to incite uh, you know, movement against the, the administration of the power. <clears throat> so, you know, you, you wouldn't want that to be a captain of a ship and have, you know, on a board a ship called mutiny. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But um, do you feel that that's 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 fact? Oh or yes, you, uh, you, you know, the things that is going on against uh, President Obama is so close to racism. It's frightening, and I say that because. I look at the Republican Party and I go, they're walking in goose step, kind of like but some, uh, some, some like most of them, a lot the of them, the, those in, in power right. out front, they're walking in goose step. Mm -hmm. No one does wrong. When Rush made his statements, he wasn't wrong. When the, the, con when the congressman uh, screamed out liar, he wasn't wrong. They came to his aid. They gave him money. They tried to do things to keep him there. Uh, when people say negative, uh, say things that is so close, you know, to the end, I, uh, uh, to the, to the over the over the boundaries, uh, nothing is done, you know. And so, when Bush was, when President Bush, I, I say I respect the office. So when the President, senior, senior uh, either uh, one, uh, when they were, when they were in office, one thing you notice is that the Republicans kind of stuck together. And this is what, being a Democrat, this is the one thing that irks me the most. Why is it that the Democrats uh, always have to fight the issue? You know, and now we can't even come together to help the people. You know, somebody don't, someone doesn't want the public option. Someone doesn't want, you know, I mean, there has to be, you, we have to get it together. You know, we're, uh, I guess the truth of the matter is, in order to be a Democrat, you have to be argumentative. Okay. Is that it? All right. Tom, what about another note? Do you have one on, uh, oh, on Obama and Nobel Peace Prize? I, I would love oh, to you hear something. Oh, yeah. yeah, I'm oh, asking just, for he one. He just one happened now. to have one on his notes. Oh, oh, thank you. you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you. He happened to have one. Thank you for uh, that. Was the next, that was the next question. Oh, okay. Bush is out. Obama's in. The world relieved offers the Nobel in grateful response. Dignity and respect returning. Hope now springs from economic and ethical rubble. Earn it, believe it. <laughs> and how'd you get in that rationale? To what Bob just yeah. basically said? Or? No, this is, um, how'd you come up with again, that? Again, the, the reaction of people to Obama getting it, and they don't, I guess they didn't see the big picture or look at it from the uh, Nobel Peace the com Committee that, mm -hmm. that, that awarded him. Mm -hmm. It says they saw what he did already. They saw the world rejoice when he was elected, when he became a president. And I was in Mexico, you know, at that time, and I saw the reaction of the people. You know, they were, they were enthusiastic. Mm -hmm. Now, that alone, just being there, he has done a hell of a lot. Mm -hmm. so, 
Well, you know, well, again, uh, like yourself, when the, the Nobel Peace Prize aspect of it, and it says Nobel Peace, you know, and, and he had already been talking to the whole issue of peace mm -hmm. and going around the world trying to get, regain, if you will, our position in the world on the whole issue of right. peace, you know, as a, as a leading force mm -hmm. aspect of it. And, uh, and you thought, then you start thinking about the, the war in Iraq and Iran and this, that, and the other. That's, that was something that he had made very clear that he wanted to cut that off, right. meaning pull the troops home, and I, e, and, and I guess that's what I was getting the sense of what they were talking to when they bestowed that on America, who he happens to be the president of mm -hmm. these United States. So we, we as Americans were getting it across the board. And for some entity, like you said, for some entity to denounce that, I thought that was interesting. And that, I think the other thing that I, I saw was that there was so much time in the, in, during that particular time when they were going through the process that folks had enough time on the other side, the opposition, to cut it off. Right. You know, and people, people were basically calling their markers in and said, don't give it to him. Don't give it to him. Not America. He doesn't represent America. And, I, and that's the thing that I was getting out of, uh, and people were calling me and talking about this issue. Well, you know, I think uh, one of the things I think is that if it had been out 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 there that the that the Nobel uh, Peace Prize that the the committee was looking at giving it to President Obama, we would have had an uproar in this country of Republicans. Well, it, that's what was happening. You know, they, they, they found the out when they, they the found quietly. out, the world found out. Right, right, right. It, it and was, so yeah, after, it it, but it was too late. Yeah. Unlike the Olympics, yeah. unlike now, the Olympics. That's what I was going to bring up. You take the Olympics. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I mean, we are uh, some of the people in America are about uh, about as dumb as a box of rocks. They, in, in order to Sounds hold like someone back, <laughs> <laughs> I want I want a royal. <laughs> but in order to hold someone back, they are willing to do anything, deface this country in any kind of way. Mm -hmm. That is ridiculous. I remember in 88, I was on the Jesse Jackson campaign, and people were talking about him being the vice president to the caucus. And just it was going through, going through. And, you know, it's a lot of people say he got bought off. A lot of people said uh, he didn't want to be second chair. But, you know, when you haven't been anywhere, second chair is great. And so some people, but what, what happened was, and I really and truly believe this, the Democratic Party did not want a black person that close to the top back in 88. So they would not allow it to happen. And we and they would rather lose than to have that happen. Well, you know, and, another, again, thinking about there are some positives from the standpoint of some Republicans, like, in fact, like Senator John McCain. I mean, he was very, very nice right. about the announcement. He felt very good about it and was very, was very enlightened about the fact that um, that President Obama had gotten the Nobel Peace Prize, and then uh, something somewhat of the same thing with the Olympics aspect of it. There were a few folks that say, "Well, gee whiz, we should have should have gotten it." Because, in all due respect, when you think about the Olympics, had the Olympics game come over here in an area like Chicago, and people were talking about the whole issue of gangs and problems in the area and whatever, and the whole education system, and like, what a beautiful thing! But you know what would have happened? What would have happened is that it would have cleaned up. it would have cleaned up that whole situation. Maybe we could have focused. If I'm thinking about Republicans saying, "Okay, now let's focus on the education." Go <coughs> to the administration and say, "Now, not just clean up that area. We want you to clean up the whole area in the entire United States as far as where are these young people coming from? Is mm -hmm. if education is the issue, let's get it resolved." So there were many benefits that could have been happening in, in this whole issue of getting the Olympics. Now, was it, was it the Brazil got the? Right. The, the Olympics. And they had, and, the, worst, they had one the, the worst crime. The worst crime in the world, if you will, for that matter. <laughs> so it's going to be interesting to see. And guess mm -hmm. what they're going to do? Yep. They're going to take advantage of cleaning up their situation. Mm -hmm. Got me? Yeah, no, they are. But quotes? remember um, when some the Pope or some other dignitaries came down there, they boarded up the view of the, of the slum areas right. so you wouldn't see it. So um, you're talking about millions of people in those slums. Mm -hmm. You don't just move them mm -hmm. away into other housing. It's just not, you won't but do maybe it. Maybe respond to some But at least respond somehow, have, but you've got to do it. Yeah. There's a huge amount of community development. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure the, the Olympics, the actual Olympics, are going to be outside of the city okay. and all that oh, sort of yeah. stuff. Yeah, okay. so it's, now you know, that we've discussed that one, give us another good one. What about another one that's really nice? What about all of these? Uh, uh, 
Well, I, you mentioned Joe Wilson earlier. Joe Wilson, okay. I said, you know, the post office is relieved. Joe, let, let them know who Joe Wilson is. Just real briefly. Joe Wilson is a senator from South Carolina who, when the president was giving his uh, a major address to the joint uh, sessions of Congress, uh, and he mentioned something about, you know, immigration, and Joe Wilson, to the surprise, the shock of everybody, said, you lie. You know, if that happened to Bush, it would have been totally different. But now he, he did it. And, of course, he, he, you know, he was booed uh, publicly uh, in, in the House there with everybody. But anyhow, it was, okay. it was, it was embarrassing. Okay. And I'm sh I hope to heck it was embarrassing to the, um, to the, um, of the pe fact. people of South Carolina. I just said the post office is relieved that the public is now referring to erratic public behavior as going Joe Wilson rather than going postal. <laughs> <laughs> Very interesting. Time. Very, very interesting piece. Okay. Any more discussion? Any more points? You want to make a point about that one? You know, well, it's, it's Again, just, it just amazed, it, it amazed me that the next day, they Joe around. Wilson. Uh, the Republicans rallied around him. He was on Fox News, and they were treating him like he was a hero. Uh, I can't think picked of the Picked up a million bucks or so they in the picked fund. A, uh, uh, they, they, he got, a, uh, got an extra $1.5 million into his coffer for re-election. Total of $6 million. A total of six. Over the, see, I mean, uh, that next day he had one point five. You know, so now it's up to six. I mean, so this is what I want our Democratic... Uh, elected officials and workers to understand we have to come together and stop looking for a reason to fight each other okay okay good point yeah you know. you got anything on the health plan what about the health plan that's that's a biggie today i mean oh is that right okay you got anything <laughs> health, health plan okay oh, right. you have one yes <laughs> yes come on please <laughs> recent senate voting shows there is far more concern for the continued financial welfare of the health insurance industry and key campaign coffers than of our health. We're collateral damage, which is a pre-existing condition. <laughs> <laughs> and how did you come up with that one? What were your thoughts? As you were doing this, I mean, I'm sure you probably had about four or five different versions. When you I have several. Thing. I had several, but okay. you know. But you, got, you picked that one. Well, this is the one since the last time I was here. Okay, right. So I didn't, I had all those from before, so this was the most recent. But the most I, recent. I had, then it was, how it comes, I don't know, it's spontaneous. Mm -hmm. Some things just come. Some I have to work over, you know, a couple of days. I'll word edit them, wordsmith it and all this, but some of them come very, very easy. Mm -hmm. Again, you have to stay less than 35 words. And the shorter, the better. And the use of humor helps, okay. you know, so that people... Read it and you know, and, yeah. you know, catch them by surprise, and you get your word across, your message across. Well, it's my understanding, but I, mean, well, you gotta I want you to respond to that. Now, now you start talking about as far as Democrats getting together because they have the lead in both both chambers, right. both the, as as President Obama and then at the, at the Congress and the Senate. Now, it's, I noticed that uh, Senator Wyden here in Oregon had, had, had his own plan and right. was kind of like holding out, if you will. But he has since, if you will, have joined the group. So, right. well, what's your read now? Is it well, you see them get, coming together? They're coming together because uh, I believe the pressure from the uh, from the people are, uh, you know, saying we want it. We want you to develop it, and let's get it. Let's get it out there. And we're going to see which side of the aisle, <laughs> once they have a plan, which side of the aisle is doing everything to stop it. You know, because it has to be a joint from the Congress, uh, from the Senate and the, and the House, to, in order to be out there. So we want to see which side of the aisle is now trying to stop everything. Now, yeah, but you know, let me give you something yeah. personal. Okay. A uh, few weeks ago, I had a colonoscopy. You go in, they they hit you with a needle, say everything. You they do their thing. I don't know what they did because I was knocked out, mm -hmm. but I wasn't knocked out when the bill came. Okay. Twenty five hundred dollars. Okay. <gasps> you know. I'm like, wow, 1300 to the anesthesiologist and 13 something to the, uh, uh, to the uh, doctor, I mm -hmm, guess. Mm -hmm. But my wife had surgery, and that was the wow factor, you know, because we got, we, those bills are now coming in. So far, and we don't have 
the anesthesiologists and, and some of the other things from the doctor from the hospital. Mm -hmm. We're at twenty five thousand dollars. Now wait a minute. Now. What about the coverage? Don't you have some coverage? Oh, we have coverage, okay. but I mean to think for she didn't even stay in the hospital, but she stayed overnight. Oh, I see what you're saying. I see you, you're just talking about how one night in the that? hospital, in uh, uh, operation, twenty five thousand dollars so far. We figure when everything come in, it'll be somewhere in the thirties. How in the world does a person without health care afford to have that operation? And not only that, not only that, but you know who pays for it when they have to? We do. Yeah. Well, the person who's working. Yeah. Yes. Right. The, yes. So, that, so that, that, that's being looked at. Yes. I mean, that, that's, that's, a, that's a good point. I think the, the one of the, the things that is not said enough is that one medical condition, a significant medical condition, can, can put you on the street. Yes. You can lose everything. Mm -hmm. In fact, the, the numbers of the homeless are swelling because of that, because they had medical problems uh, and went broke or couldn't afford it and all this. They lost everything. Mm -hmm. um, and well, and you can see just the gradual decimation of the, of the middle class. You know their ranks are are going down. Poor, rural poor is going up, and uh, that is what's taking place with existing social policies. The total imbalance. Well, you know, uh, again, on that, that same note, is that it has been said that the population, the majority of the population, supports the national health care. Yes, just mm -hmm. for that same reason. Mm -hmm. Many of the folks who are in the middle class and you know and are better. Are supporting this document quietly, right? Not making any statements because it's also been said in, in a kind of a light way that a number of Republicans have proposed amendments. That's part of the major package, but they they don't play that off as much. Right? It's always the negative. No, it's just Democrats that are presenting the plan. Well, that's that's the election factor. I call it. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I can't agree with you because I want to get elected next mm -hmm. time. And I don't want to be seen as whatever they want to name the person that that is trying to get something through to help the people. You know, and, and I think it's time to take take so much politics out of politics. And the, well, the funding out of politics. You know, the the this, this money that goes into playing for politics. But the other issue to that point is that you may be in office and you want to stay in office, but if you voted for this uh, you know, package, health care package, there's going to be some character that's going to want to run against you, and the healthcare industry is going to go ahead and, and fund him, mm -hmm. support him, so he can run a, a tough campaign against you. So, you know, that's... Um, that's but a, the healthcare, uh, the healthcare uh, he, uh, organizations have come out in favor of, and this is what's bugged, uh, bugged, got me all, I mean, I mean, I'm like stuck in mud, because I don't understand it. In, in, many, in many forms of what's come about, the healthcare industry has said yes. Well, what are they saying yes to? The fact that everybody has to have insurance? That's true, too. Yes, everybody. Kind of like, kind of like car insurance, huh? This is good, yes. <laughs> and this is going to be one heck of a stimulus package for an already bloated industry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but they we'll don't see how, how big those salaries go up now. So. Well, that, again, that's the other point is about the, the, that your particular point was to bring in a public entity. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that would make it more competitive and have them basically being more competitive among themselves. Right now there's no competition. There's they, no competition. They, have a, they agree among themselves, right? I think yeah. the thing that has to be said is that this public option is not reinventing the wheel. This is being done all over the world mm -hmm. very efficiently, very well. In fact, people, you know, travel over Europe or down South America, Central America, get hurt, go to the hospital, go see a doctor. Oh, you don't have to pay. Mm -hmm. It's just because the system takes care of them, of everybody. Is well, Medicare a form of a uh, public option? A me Medicare? Yeah. yeah. Well, expanding, <laughs> yes, expanding yes, Medicare. Yes, yes. Is. Isn't yeah, that a yes, part of yes, yes, You know, so people get with it. Get, you know, begin to understand what you're arguing about. Mm -hmm. you know, well, you know, maybe one of the entities within the private sector would opt to say, okay, fine, we're going to break from the chain mm -hmm. and we're going to lower our costs. That way, now you got a built-in uh, oh, public man. option. option. To, uh, to compete, then they'll have to react to get the business. 
Just yeah. a thought. Just a thought. But I think you're, you're reaching that. there. Just a thought. You're reaching. You're just, reaching. Just, <laughs> the airlines try that every now and then. All right. You good, know. Good. Well, I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to go on and take a break. And when we get back, we're going to see if Tom's got something on David Letterman. You know, he's one of the one of the major top of the heap uh, talk show hosts in the, in the evening, if you watch. But anyway, that was a very interesting incident. But stick by, stand by, and then we'll kind of let you know who he is, why, what statement he made, and, and get, get Tom's reaction to it, okay? Let's take a short break. We'll be right back. And by the way, we're going to be opening up the lines, too, again. You are watching Oregon Voters Digest. This program can be seen again on these channels on these dates and times. Tell a friend. All right, we're back, folks. Again, like I said, we've got uh, Tom D. Jordan in the house, and uh, we're, we're just kind of getting, giving, get through him, if you will, responding to some of the major issues that are that are that are here now with us, among us. And a lot of us don't really get involved in the politics of things. Every time I talk to some folks, they're saying, "Well, no, I, I'm not familiar with uh, uh, these talk show hosts. I'm not familiar with the issues. I don't know anything about Iran." I'm, I'm just trying to go to work and get myself and pay my bills. That's all I'm trying to do. I okay. heard that. But anyway, we, what we're doing, though, we're, we're giving you some sense of what is going on and from a national standpoint, from a local standpoint. And like I said, we've got Tom D. Jordan in the house, and, uh, and he's well-read and well-identified within that particular medium. So anyway, we've been talking about this, and we've gone over some of the quotes that he had made in the Oregonian. And now we're going to start another session. We're gonna, we got the, the line's going to be open right now. For those of you who, who were part and parcel of uh, the first half hour, you might uh, you might want to give us a call. And for those of you who are just joining us, again, like I said, uh, uh, we're going to start off with the David Letterman piece. Uh, David Letterman, uh, uh, you know, a, a comedian, somewhat comic comedian aspect, been on the air for a number number of years. And right front with some of the things that, that he was doing uh, could be said about a number of employers, for that matter, as far as I'm concerned, and, and lead persons along that line. So. But anyway, with that, Tom, how you doing again? I'm hanging right in there. Sounds great. Let's let's go with another quote. How about Letterman? It was good to hear David Letterman honestly admit to earlier sexual dalliances. Better him than yet another elected family values guy. Oh wow! Boy, that's a good one. <laughs> that's a good one. Gee, that's a good one. Ooh. Wow, you just said you, you, you did. Oh, you wow. like that? Oh, I oh I love it when people do that. <laughs> How'd you come up with that one? <laughs> well, kind of well, give us a little bit more well, insight. Well, no, first of all, you got two things. Is you have David Letterman, right? And I and how he handled it, and you have what three recently Republicans, you know, got caught, admitted, or one like this, and of course they did their little two-step, and um, you know, the, the duplicity of saying. I'm the f of the family values and all this sort of stuff, and these are the guys are the ones that are getting caught, you know. So, 
I think, you know, the, I mentioned on the last uh, show, it says, you know, those who, who point their fingers, you know, and say, da da da, they're the ones that usually have something to hide. You know, that's, that, that, so under and the guise of being, I'm family values, boy, you better start really checking on them because they're up to something. Well, what do you think? Well, you know, uh, one, one of the things is, I think a lot is missed uh, in the David Letterman uh, issue. And that is that someone was trying to blackmail the man yep. for sleeping with someone that worked in the same building that he did, you know, on the show. Well, I don't, uh, it might have his name on it, you know, and all of that, but that person that he was sleeping with, I think they were dating for a while. It was about, but, but it wasn't just you know, one. Yeah, and, and so he, a he, you know, he, was, well, he, was having, he admitted that he yeah, was having relationships. And like he said, I've had relationships with people on the show. He wasn't married at the time. You know, he was and, not married. And, right. He and was a single person, and he was able to date. You know, so, and a lot of times when you date when you're grown, you end up doing the grown-up. Mm -hmm. And so he did it, and, but this guy thought he could make money by letting people know. And he found out that now he's going to probably do jail. Yeah, yeah. Do jail time, time. Time. Go. yeah. yeah the, 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 your, your point is very good in that nobody said anything about the women. Right. I mean, far as watching Letterman talk about it, it seemed like all of it was consensual. And right. so it's, uh, so this blackmailer just thought he could um, try to humiliate, embarrass, and hopefully uh, Letterman would cave, mm -hmm. and he didn't. Okay. So, all right, what about another one? What about immigration? Immigration? You got anything on that one? Yeah. Immigration hit a poultry processing plant in a small community, deporting employees to Mexico, effectively closing the plant, devastating the local economy. Unemployed whites didn't flock to fill the jobs. Wow, wow. how'd you get to that? Well, first of all, I saw the news on uh, how it, what happened to the entire community. I mean, all the other businesses there needed these you know, employees. They were working, they were paying taxes. And um, so when you take a major part of the economy out, that if uh, okay. it talks, okay. it's other businesses now that affects right. itself. Okay. Look like we've got a caller. Caller, you on the air? Your question or comment, please, on any of these points that Tom has made. Anything you want to say? Yes, Tom. Look. And hello, Bruce and Bob. How's that? This is this is that uh, Lincoln Democrat. Oh yes. <laughs> <laughs> and it's good to see you. Good to hear you. All right. And uh, Mr. Desjardins. Yes, sir. I actually try to think of things too. Uh, but my blog is a little bit longer than, than yours, I guess. I babble on, as, Bo as Bruce and Bob can both tell you. <laughs> I'm but, sure they, uh, they, they will. <laughs> the, they were holding up, the Republicans have been holding up health care because they want to be able to read the bill. My question in the Senate, for the Senate, is how many people are on staff in a senator's office? Hmm. And when they hire them, don't they hire people that can read? Exactly. Not yes. just people that know the right stops to make on the plane across country? <laughs> mm -hmm. The worst thing you could do is have a senator read an entire bill because they have a propensity to fall asleep. Mm -hmm. So they don't read it. You need to have smart staff analyze things at a second and third level and so that you've got good questions to ask and, and clarify things. And it's interesting back in the previous administration, how many major bills were put through, were ramrodded, you got to do this right away, you know, and don't have time to read it, and it was, they were passed because they felt like they had to. The Patriot Act, the, uh, the Medicare uh, Part D, and, and, and others. Um, now all of a sudden, the Republicans well, say, yes, hey, we got to read this. I'll, I'll leave it at this. I think the senator's offices are pretty good size, and they've got a lot of people and I would think most of the people that are working for that senator know more than just the right play, right airport to stop in. They ought, they ought to know what the senator thinks about issues and read the bills and help them out. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. true. 
Well, come on, give me something to argue with you with, you know. I, <laughs> you yeah, I agree with you 100%. Bye-bye. All right. Thank All you right. Right. very much. Is that Wally? Yes, Wally. Yes, yeah. Wally. Wally. Hi, Wally. I hope you're doing well, buddy. Give us a call. By the way, give us a call. We're going to yeah, have a couple of calls. We're trying to get in touch with you, Wally. <laughs> give me a call. We're good old Clackamas County. Good, good, good. Well, you know, he, he makes the point about um, the fact that, you know, they've got many dollars, if you will, to hire staff, and they've got a very efficient staff. And most right. of those guys, and I'll be just straight up with you, figure the, the time that they uh, many of them have been there for years, if mm -hmm. you will. In most cases, a lot of them can't comprehend. They got to, they are dependent upon staff, yes, if yeah. you will, no, no. to put their response to anything that comes across their desk. They don't just quote pick things up and then go through a bunch of papers and this, that, and the other, and then write things out and say this is the response. I mean, even in those hearings, you'll notice in the back of them, it's nothing but staff. Yes. And then they have to turn back to staff if they, mm -hmm. if they hear something that they weren't familiar with, and then staff sort of brings them up to. To par, and then they respond. That's right. And in some cases, if they can't respond, then they'll hold a recess and go back to mm. confer with staff, and then come back on. Or if not, if not that, well, they just won't appear again. So well, anyway, but you, I, I, well, I think Wally made a good point right. about that, and it's very, very important. Well, I know Wally and I. We've we've lobbied Congress in the past, mm -hmm. uh, and one of the things that uh, you find when you go lobbying is that you're happy when you can meet. Your representative, right. you know, if you don't have the big name and all that, you're talking to a staff that's person right, that's right. that knows exactly what you're talking that's about. Right. You go into those side right. rooms, staff meets with you, try right. to educate you about what the what the person think, you know, the congressperson right. blah 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 routine, and then he gets they get the information and they say we'll get back to you. And then a lot of times when you walk in with that congressperson, the staff is there. Oh yes, very you know, much so. To make sure you know and uh, take notes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's what they look like they're doing. That's anyway. right. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for that call, Wally. Again, uh, give us a call. You got the number sitting on the screen, and uh, any response would be welcome. Uh, you know, because like I said, uh, we're, we're trying to talk to transparency here, and it's very, very important that we do that. So, again, we're talking. We, we've got we got Tom in the house, and boy, I tell you, he's bringing us some good, good thoughts here. Go I got one. Um, we, Look, just... we got another call. We got another oh, call. Okay, okay. Call me on the air. Your question or comment, please. Yes, my name's Tricia, and I wanted to uh, make a comment about Fox News. Okay. I totally will not even listen to Fox News, and the reason why <laughs> is because I really believe every comp, every journalist that they have, from Glenn Beck to Rush Limbaugh, they all, to me, as a white American woman over the age of 50, I have a lot of wisdom, but not a lot of uh, a knowledge as far as all the topics go, but I can tell you one thing. I think they're very anti, and I think they're prejudiced, and I think that's why they're they're talking the way they are. They <laughs> and the Republicans appear to to me to seem very upset that a black man won over a white man, and I think they're disgusted over it. and And I really think that Obama makes a very good president for our United States. And he is making a change and a difference. I agree. Thank you very and much, Carla. To have the Thank Fox you. News and, and the, the white uh, people who are against him says, grow up and get over it, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, you, made, you mentioned Fox News, and I just happen to have you one. You happen to have one? Yes. Good. The caller the call will appreciate that. What, what Diplomatically, you is it wise to have Fox News broadcast overseas? Are you Americans nuts, is often asked of us. Perhaps a State Department disclaimer? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. That's a good one. Yeah. Well, you know, another comment I would make in regards to the caller, I've always made a point about the fact that a negative is more positive than a positive. Think about that. A negative is more positive than a positive. My point is that I look at Fox News, so I know exactly where they're going to be coming from. And just to see that, in fact, it's not really helping uh, that uh, Republican minority, if you will. Mm -hmm. Hopefully at some point in time the Republican majority will get upset about enough to basically vote those people out and get back down to the, this, these United States, a government of the people, by the people, and for the people, and not look at it. Because that's, that's why we dis, we're discussing the issue of race now, more so now, because President Obama, who happens to be an African American, is sitting up as president. But realistically, at some point in time, we would like to just see him as president of these United States, the most qualified person there is. Mm -hmm. Got me? So, so I think that's a good deal that uh, Fox is identifying themselves that way because it's basically sh what it's doing is it's telling a lot of Republicans, based on that statistics that I gave, about 20 percent 
Twenty percent of Republicans were, were allowed themselves to be identified as Republicans. The other eighty percent are saying no way. Mm -hmm. So that's saying something a lot. So thank you, caller. That was a good call. Let's you know, talk another a little bit more thing, about that. Another thing that you can look at when you talk about Fox News is the fact that it's never something positive. It's always the negative side of things. And, at, and it's the divisive side of things, how to divide, how to divide. And, they're, and I can see where they're going with this, and that is if they can divide the white populace of, this, of these United States, Democrats or Republicans, the Republicans they hold and the Democrats they divide, showing what, like Saturday Night Live did, he, he hasn't done nothing. You know, and they and they and it was on for three or four days after that on Fox News. He hasn't done nothing. And if they can show that and get people to go, hmm, they might be able to win next time. And this is all about winning. That's yeah. the American way. Okay. Now, they don't have the majority. They've lost the House, both the Houses of Congress and the White House. It says the the tact that they must use, other than getting a lot of hordes of money thrown at them, but it's the propaganda. Remember John Kerry? Yes. Sir. Kerry did not, he could not conceive that people would not believe that he did what he did, earn those medals, save those guys, and here are the, the, the people he saved right there. I mean, it's so obvious. And he didn't think that could be de detracted from. Along come the swift boat, uh, uh, swift boat uh, veterans for for truth, and they diverted enough people so they didn't believe Kerry anymore. Right. That is extraordinarily powerful. You can make people believe something that's contrary in, to their best interests, and the same thing is happening now with health care. That's right. Mm -hmm. They're just turning people around. I mean, that, that classic comment, you know, I want government out of my Medicare. You know. Jeez, you know, <laughs> where's the basis of education here? Well, I would say this. One, a lot of the people who are speaking can afford health care. That's one thing. You know, the people who are making the comment on the negative side of it. Mm -hmm. Okay. When you look at follow the money, so to speak, they, don't, they, they can afford the health care aspect of it. It's not an issue with them. But the person who has an issue sometimes with it, you don't hear about the comments. Just like when we just took, took the read took the break. One of the people here on the staff, mm -hmm. you know, here behind the scene basically said, hey, I've got some problems. I'm worried. I'm worried. I'm worried. About this, that. But a lot of Americans are that way. And they're sort of the quiet majority. And I still feel at the end of the day, we are going to get a health care package. And that's going to pass Congress. Otherwise, I, there's going to be quite an uproar. I'll tell you one of the things that's, that's going to happen. If jobs continue to leave these shores the way they are, and more and more Americans are without jobs, and that makes them without health care. Oh, yeah. We're um, going to have problems. Yeah, yeah, yes. <laughs> um, all right. As aside from this. Yes. I got, I got another one I want you to we want to talk about. The business of bailing out the financial institutions, Wall Street and New York, and then they took the money and gave themselves bonuses, hundred dollar, a million dollar bonuses and all this, because they were entitled to it. And not one of them apologized for creating, you know, the economic collapse. What if, so one of the good things a friend was telling me yesterday, uh, on a trip up to Hood River and back, it says that one of the things that happened because people have been laid off is that they're trying to get into, start their own businesses. He says there's a wealth of ideas, there's a wealth of products and medical equipment that could be packaged and marketed. If they were given a million dollars and required to hire just three people to get, and you know how to get your business plan together, how to get a market plan together and get those products going, we would be back into manufacturing again. So where do we put the money? We put it into somebody's bonus and we'll never see that money again? Or do you put it into the small businessman, a small businesswoman who could take their, their dream and make it come to fruition right. and expand? Well, that was the American way. That is. And it still is, I think. It's just a matter of us getting back. We're, to right. 
but we're, we we're we've lost it. We'll get it back. We'll get I hope back. we. Get I it hope back. it hasn't, you know, uh, faded into a dark memory. So now before we get in it, before we go, we only have about nine more minutes, and we got to do something from a local standpoint. You know, just recently, this past week, on this issue with uh, with uh, our mayor Sam Adams, you know, the, that situation. I guess here the, we go again. The numbers didn't. Yeah, the numbers <laughs> didn't come up. The thirty some odd thousand. Yeah. Uh, it wasn't shared from the standpoint what, whether whether it was thirty thousand, ten thousand, five thousand, whatever. They were short. It, it was. They were short. <laughs> and then now we're getting ready to go back into this situation again. And uh, I noticed that there were several business folks that came out. I think uh, Ron Tonkin came out. Uh, uh, he wasn't representing the company, but but himself personal. And uh, and then there was an, another gentleman from Columbia Sportswear. Yeah. Again, two as I an thought individual. Tim Boyles. No, did he yeah. say he wasn't going to? No, no, he, he is, but he said oh, yeah. as an individual, but mm -hmm. not as the company aspect. Oh, okay. of so my point is that it's back on the table again. Uh, should what do you think? Do, but the other thing is, that have you have you put put a piece? No, in? I haven't put a one on that one. Last time we talked about, it, you said Bruce said it's a dead issue aspect of it, but it's, it looked like it's still current. How would you comment? I realize I'm uh, I'm getting ahead of you on that piece, but. Uh, is there any way you might be able to come up with a one-liner or two uh, on this one? Yeah, I'd probably use the imagery of the phoenix, the bird rising yeah. out of the ashes, you know, continue. <laughs> How do you kill this bird, you know? <laughs> and, uh, and let it die, you know? It, says, it didn't get enough votes, mm -hmm. didn't get enough signatures. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's democracy. Right. Bingo. So, you know, you it's kind of like we, throwing money at a dead dog and expecting him to get up and go, you know, I don't think so. You know, uh, they're, they're throwing throwing money at this issue to keep it on. For some reason, somebody out there don't want to see Sam Adams in the position of mayor of this city. But and, then, but then uh, you Ron know, Tonkin, and that's, instead of leaving it for the voters in the next election. Right, but, the, but, but Ron Tonkin brought up an interesting point. He said, well, look, if in fact there might be a majority, that's what I was reading from the piece that he had made from the standpoint, said, let the people vote on this issue. Let, for once, just so we can just cut off any other additional blah, blah, blah. Just okay, fine. Maybe Sam probably would would say, okay, let, let let it be done, if you will, and the only way we can do that on the democracy aspect of it, the majority wins. Mm -hmm. So let's just put it out there and put vote, and let's go one way or the other. What do you think? I say I say crap. Why That's not? what I say. But why I wait? Say, you're saying still. You're I'm still saying, saying wait for the vote three you years down the road. You summer young W. Well, <laughs> wait, 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 wait. <laughs> what are you doing? Come on. Well, here's the, here's the thing. What is it? They tried. They failed. So now we're going to keep trying and failing, trying and failing. And you know what will happen? Eventually, there's going to be another election. And then the people's voices will all rise. That's what elections are about. You know, gather, you know I, all those people that want save your money, get you a candidate to run against him, and bang, lambaste him. But didn't he have a right, though, if he wants to do it over and over and over again? Why not? Let him. You waste your money. Waste your money. Yeah. And also having this vote of the people. Okay. Those cost money. Yes. And we don't have that much money to fly around with, okay. to play around with. Okay. So yeah. I just yeah. thought we, we need to discuss this issue. Yeah. It is this an issue? That, it is Consider an issue. Consider it discussed. I'd rather see that money they're going to use uh, to try and, uh, let's say they get enough signatures. Now we got to hold a special election. Uh, the money that they're going to use there could help a lot of people in health care. <laughs> if, that, if they could take it out of that bucket and put it over in the other one, Amen. you know, I mean, it could it could uh, fill a lot of these potholes that I keep running into, you know, around the city. Uh, going across the bridge, uh, certain things need to be done to certain bridges could help that. Could you know? I mean, there's so many other things that you can do with this money at this time, you know, that this you get a chance at this on the free side. You know, let him let him do his time. Say, hey, you, it's nice to know that you're a one you're a one uh, term candidate. And that's that. Well, I know one other thing that really turned a lot of people off, and I know I'll do respect myself too, was the fact that he did not disclose how many signatures he had gotten. Right. I mean, how, how many they got? You know, he didn't say, well, uh, I won't share this because. Otherwise, there might be repercussion on the person if I identified, blah, blah, blah. We did, did it. If the person signed something, you sign it. You That's know? right. You did. Uh, you know, uh, but the fact of the matter is, you don't know what that number was. Like I said, it could have been 5,000, 10,000, 6,000. Right. You don't know. And right. I think they, he would have developed some credibility had he said, okay, fine, we did get 30,000. You know, throw it out there to the media. The media said, yeah, we got 30,000. Okay, it's a short, short lived campaign. Well, maybe there's a possibility we might be able to pick others if you can come up with the money. Mm -hmm. Because I understand he got in touch with Ross or somebody, one of those people down there that basically pick up signatures, 
for a fee, yeah. fee aspect of it. And they're pretty successful because they know they know the game. Right. But but the credibility of what he'd already gotten was something that had a question mark on it. And I think a lot of people just kind of say, "Hey, look, I don't know about this piece." Can I? Can, uh, I know that's a good subject, but can I ask the question? Yes. Uh, uh, over, the, over over the national issue, and that right. is. This little kid that uh, went up in the attic, I guess, in the uh, in a in the balloon. Floor. You got one. He's got, got one. one. He got I, one. I didn't see your papers. I want everybody. Okay, to let's get one. We got about three minutes. Yeah. Throw it out there, Tom. You got one on the flying yes, saucer. Don't. The flying saucer. Oh, right. The balloon boy over distended news story, a symptom of an anemic news industry, desperate to fill airspace, even figuratively. Ah, I like that piece. Well, now it's under investigation. I mean, they're, yeah. they're, they're going after it. Yeah, there's... And you can see, I mean, it was, it was obviously what it was all about, the video. And then the kid broke out right there in the, in the yeah, news conference. Yeah. This is for TV. <laughs> <laughs> Innocent. <laughs> Innocent. Yeah. Out of the mouths of babies. Out of the mouths of babies. Honesty. Okay, very good. You know, that was a good point there. That, that was your rationale for the way you put that. Say that one more time. I mean, I, the balloon boy? Yeah, that, that's a balloon boy. I like that. And man, it says, the... The fact that they kept playing this over and over, even though the boy was found, okay? Yeah. And then it's no longer news. And it says, the balloon boy over distended news story, a symptom of an anemic news industry, desperate to fill airspace, even figuratively. Mm -hmm. So it's just. And that's where we are today. Yeah. You know, it's, it's like, it's to say, all of a sudden the media was just on bad piece. And you say, well, gee, there are many other things around the world to talk about, and even in this country unemployment, yeah. the healthcare aspect of it. I mean, all the time that they devoted, as you say, to, to that particular piece, mm -hmm. they could have been spending more time mm -hmm. talking to, let's really get into the rationale as to why we have this other group uh, mm -hmm. that's pushing against this whole deal for health care. Right. Amen, amen. And, the, and, you know, I mean, you talk about other things out there. I'll bring up one right quick, and that is a young lady in Mississippi, three years ago, she cut line in Walmart cut the line in Walmart. One of the employees uh, told her she couldn't. Uh, she said, I'm with my brother who's in line. And they, he called the police. The police ended up taking her out and arresting her. She's now, the uh, district attorney down there is now charging her. Uh, she could get 15 years. 15 years for 15 cutting years line. For cutting line. And they, they said she assaulted a policeman. And since she wouldn't sign off on it, you know, and 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 then they would have let everything go as a misdemeanor. She said, "No, I don't. I, I didn't do anything for a misdemeanor charge." Well, how did that come about? I'm just, I'm just trying to figure. Out what's the punchline on this piece? The punchline is they are now uh, looking at uh, having a trial. You know, and she could get 15 years. Mm -hmm. And then quickly, did, do you have anything about the judge, the guy that didn't want to marry? They didn't want to marry this. Uh, oh, this no, I'm not yet. You don't have one yet? But I have <laughs> one, but I'm going to. Come on, gee, what do you think I do? Crank well, these up? Well, I Jeez, let me tell you. Here's one that I had about judging. And, okay, real quick. and it says, the Oregon Supreme Court cut short Mannix's Measure 11. Not nice to usurp a judge's responsibility to make sentences fit the crime. Any good attorney knows that. <laughs> <laughs> we got to get Kevin on and kind of talk a little bit about that. Thing. Oh, man. Well, well, folks, well. thanks again. Tom, it's always a pleasure. Mm -hmm. You did good today. Yeah, and I'm sure that the viewing audience would like the idea. Bob, right. thanks again. Thank you, Bob. I'm right. glad you came up with us again today. And uh, take care, Wally. Take care of yourself. Hope to hear from you soon. Let's have a cup of coffee. See you next week. Have a good one.